Today we're talking about the DJI Ronin SC. It's an awesome little gimbal and there's some things that I don't like about it as well. So I'm gonna go through my thoughts around this gimbal and also just show you some footage that I've been getting with it, some smooth buttery footage up here in the mountains of Big Bear in Southern California. Okay, so today we're talking about the DJI Ronin SC. Yep, just like that. <laughs> so I've had this gimbal for a little while now and I've been playing with it in a few settings. I really wanted to see if this was a good gimbal to get or not. There's been a lot of buzz around this gimbal and particularly because of its size and some of the features that it comes with. You know, one in particular people are playing around with is this Force Mobile, which is interesting, but I don't know how useful it would be in this size of a gimbal, and it's something that we'll talk about in a little bit. So guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do filmmaking tutorials, product reviews. I also do some YouTube training. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss one of these reviews. Okay, so let's talk about some of the goods and the bads when it comes to the DJI Ronin SC. Now, I took this up to Big Bear last weekend, and I went and shot while I was out hiking with my mom. I had my mom shoot some footage using it, and it's a pretty easy gimbal to use. She's never actually held a gimbal, so the fact that she was able to get some decently smooth shots with it shows that this gimbal is a very easy gimbal to use. And also it's stable, and that's always my first qualification when it comes to a gimbal. If a gimbal does not get stable footage, then it's not a good gimbal. Like, that's the point of this contraption is to get smooth shots. So overall, I've been getting decent shots with the Ronin SC. At first, when I was first tinkering with it, I was getting some pretty awful footage, but what's cool about the DJI Ronin SC is that once you've got your motors all balanced correctly, you go into the app, and what's really cool is you go into your motor parameters and you hit this auto-tune button. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through and auto-tune each motor independently so that even if your balance is a little bit off, it's going to adjust the motor strength so that you get smooth footage. And so I just balanced it right now and my pan switched to 47, my tilt 24, my roll 63. So it's on a zero to 100 scale and it's how much strength you're giving each motor. It's pretty cool that it does this auto tune and it's so intuitive. So you just gotta balance it, make sure that everything's balanced correctly. Go in here, click auto tune, you start getting smooth footage. Now when you don't tune it, you'll start getting some wonky footage. And you can see right here, this was before I tuned it and you can see how it's kind of all over the place. And then when I hit the auto tune, you can see that it gets rid of all those bumps and now you have stable footage. Okay, so let's talk about the layout of this gimbal. So you basically have your joystick on the back you have an M button, a record button, and you have one, two, three at the top. Now one, two, and three are different modes. So it's pretty simple, there's not a lot to it. You can just switch between the three modes and then you have your trigger on the back here. So the trigger, you double click it, it's gonna recenter, go back to center. You click it three times, it's gonna go into selfie mode. So if you are a vlogger, you just click it three times, it turns, it looks at you. Now you can shoot yourself super easy and still see the controls. Double click to go back. And then if you just hold the trigger, it locks all the motors. If you're in a follow mode, you hold the trigger, it's gonna lock it. And this is super easy to use when you're filming because if you see an object and you wanna pause on it, you can lock, hold it, then keep moving from that object or whatever it is that you're shooting. I use triggers all the time in gimbals and that's one of the things I look for when I personally am looking for a gimbal because this trigger is super helpful when it comes to just being fluid and being able to do longer takes where you wanna switch from having the motors in follow mode and then be able to lock them. Now, I talked about this in the Fiutech 4500 review. That one has a screen and there's a lot more to it so that you never actually have to go into the app. The app is great on the DJI Ronin SC. It's super intuitive. Everything is very easy to get to, but there's definitely times where I don't wanna pull up my phone to have to readjust settings. So having no screen built in is a downside to me, but you can get an attachment. And one thing that I do like about the DJI Ronin SC is that DJI has made it so that you can build this out. So on either side, there's these panels and you can put a follow focus, you can put a control unit. So like there's different things that you can add on, which makes it a much more usable gimbal. So you build it to what you want. When I bought this gimbal, I got it with the follow focus, but I haven't been using the follow focus, so I took off the follow focus and I took off the motor and it's much more stripped down. I like that. I like being able to pull things off the gimbal because I don't need to have everything on the gimbal all the time. So with my 
Phytech 4500, this is a great gimbal, but you always have this focus wheel, which I don't particularly always need. So a few of the things that I like about this design is that you can just plug this directly into a power source. You don't have to take the batteries out. That's something that a lot of these other gimbal companies are missing is that you always have to pull batteries out of other gimbals and then put them on a charger. This one you just plug right in with the USB-C. It's great, that makes it so much easier. So I never have to actually pull out the batteries. And this gimbal has an 11 hour battery life. So you never really have to charge it throughout the day. You're probably gonna be able to charge it once and use it for the entirety of the day and then charge it overnight. So you don't need to carry a bunch of extra batteries with you. A couple more things that really stand out is the locks. You can lock every motor, which for me is huge. So when I'm traveling or when I'm taking gimbals with me, if you don't have locks, gimbals are shifting all around your bag and it's really a pain. So what's interesting about this one is that you can lock it in multiple directions. You can lock it so that the motors are facing this way, or you can lock it so the motors are facing the other way, which depending on how you put it in your pack will actually matter. It does actually matter. And you can lock all your motors. So this you can take anywhere. You can just hold it like this. There's a lot of times where I'd be hiking and I'd just be holding the gimbal with it locked. It's easy to throw in and out of your bag, but also if you're getting a lot of different shots and walking around with it, then it is nice just to carry it and not having motors moving around makes it a solid piece of gear. Also, just the way it feels, it feels like a very nice product. Like this is done well, it's built well, the grip is really comfortable. That's important because you don't wanna just be hanging on to a piece of metal and you want, you know, you want to make sure that you're able to grip it right and be able to use it. It matters if you always have this thing in your hand. So in terms of design, layout, the look of it, I think DJI has definitely done something very awesome with this gimbal and I actually really enjoy it. So there's a lot of things that I really like about this gimbal, but there are a few things that I don't like. And they're not things that I necessarily would say would make you not get the gimbal, but I want to highlight a few things that I've noticed as I've been out using it. So in terms of balancing the gimbal, one of the problems that I came across and I've consistently been coming across is that on the bottom here, you have a lock and this locks your side to side, so how far the camera is shifted left or right, but it also locks your sled moving forward or back. One thing when it comes to balancing gimbals and being able to switch lenses, because every time you switch a lens, you're gonna have to rebalance, you wanna have each motor independent, each moving part needs to be an independent switch that you're able to lock and unlock so that you can focus on one element at a time. Now what I've noticed is every time that I put a new lens on here and I'm rebalancing, if it has a front to back balancing issue, then you have to unlock this, which might mean you'll click hit the side to side, which DJI has thought about, so they made it so that the side to side has a little click in it and you can hear it as you move it. It has these little notches that it rests in. However, Say you get your front to back balanced properly, now you have to balance your side to side. Well, your camera's gonna be moving around as you're trying to balance side to side. So you do this little dance of trying to hold the camera, get the balance right. And one thing that DJI's done is they put this little lock thing on the front. It doesn't necessarily lock the camera sled in place, but it basically allows you to hold it in one direction. So one thing I noticed, I wish there was one more lock on here so that the sled and the side to side could be done independently. And when I when I shoot, I've been shooting with two different cameras. I've been shooting with the Nikon Z6 and the GH5S. Now with the GH5S, I switch between a lot of primes. So today I was shooting up with a client, I was doing a commercial shoot. We were shooting a ton of footage in a gym and I was switching between my 12, my 15, and my 25 millimeter primes. And if you're aware of Panasonic lenses, all of those are very different sizes, so you have to rebalance each time. And that's where you start seeing the issue, not having a lock for every independent movement. Now, another thing that bothers me is the plate. So the plate is not a standard size plate, it's DJI's standard size plate. So if you're using like tripods or you're using other gear where you wanna be able to slip this plate on and off, then you're gonna have to take the plate off and then put it on a new plate, which is frustrating for me because I like to dance between different pieces of gear. So I'm always having to take this plate off, put it back on, make sure I put it in the right spot because otherwise then you have to rebalance. So you could see where it starts getting frustrating. If you're only using this gimbal with this configuration and this plate on it, then that's not really a problem. However, it's when you're switching between, that's where you start noticing it. Okay, so something interesting about this gimbal is that because the size is so small, what we're noticing is that working in this, working with the handheld straight up, you can see the screen easily, especially because you know the screen has the, has the kink design, you can see the screen. If you had a flip out screen, it would be off to the side. 
But one of the things that we're noticing the more that we play around just kind of in this setting is that as soon as you go to flashlight mode or underslung, you really lose being able to see the screen, especially in like flashlight mode. And there's a lot of times where you're down in this position and even if you had your screen out, so with the Nikon you can pump it out, it's gonna hit. So you really can't have the screen out because it's gonna hit the motors. It's so tight. It keeps it small, but it is frustrating to work with. You're kind of shooting blind as soon as you go down. As soon as you get into bigger cameras, you definitely aren't gonna be able to use this gimbal. I tried to use my Olympus EM1X, which is a bigger body style. Definitely did not work. There's no way I could get it to balance properly. When I had this camera on and I was out hiking with it, this body with this lens, I have the 24 to 70 on here, is like at the max because you can see that it's almost hitting the motors when you're moving the camera from upright to underslung. So if you are using a bigger camera, it's gonna be much harder to be able to go underslung like this because you have very little clearance depending on your lens and camera combo. So that is something to keep in mind. This is made for smaller cameras. So if you use the Panasonic GH5, GH5S, Nikon Z6, something like that, then you're fine. But as soon as you have a bigger body style or you wanna use heavier lenses, this gimbal might not be the ideal one for you. And that's where you'd wanna to go to a bigger one like the Fiutech 4500. And I reviewed this one a couple weeks ago. It's honestly not that much bigger and it has similar functionalities, but there is more options with the Fiutech 4500. You have a screen built in, you never have to actually connect the app, and also it can hold heavier cameras. You have a more standardized sled, so there are some definite benefits to this gimbal over this gimbal. However, this one is a little bit smaller, so they are similar in sizes, but there is some differences. Now, one of those is the Force Mobile. So with the Force Mobile, you basically use the motions of your phone to control the motions of your camera. Now, is this something that you would ever use? I personally don't think so, and this is why. So, here's my Benro tripod. Got a nice big head on it. When it comes to using something like Force Mobile, you're gonna need to have something like a tripod to be able to control your phone because you can obviously slow this down, but it's hard to like do these movements. So you'd want a setup where you had your phone on a tripod head because then you can do smooth movements, which is what they show on the website is they have a whole tripod set up. So they show this on the website with a tripod head. And this makes sense because when you do these movements, they're nice and smooth because you're basically panning as if you had your camera on a tripod head. Now the dilemma for this is that you basically would need a monitor here. So you'd have someone running with the Ronin SC and someone sitting here with the monitor being able to control the movements. Well, the issue is when you have the Ronin SC, you're gonna have to now build this out. And you'd have to put some wireless on here so that you can send the signal to the person with the tripod. It's not unrealistic, but at the same time, if you're gonna be building out a gimbal a little bit bigger, there are other options with like the ring that allow you to attach all these different pieces and also gives the operator two hands to work with because one hand single style gimbals get heavy after time. So this could be useful, but I also think if you're gonna be doing shoots with this style of filmmaking, then you're probably gonna want a bigger setup with more options. But it is cool that they've integrated into this size gimbal and it, it's interesting, not something I think I would particularly use with the Ronin SC. Now the other thing that's really cool is you could put your phone on top and basically use this gimbal with active track. And what's interesting about active track is that it will track your object. DJI's active track works super well. On their DJI Osmo Pocket, it works, works really well. On the DJI Osmo Mobile, it works really good. So same type of technology, it's built into a bigger handheld gimbal like this, and it works great. Don't know how often I personally would use it, but if you're a solo creator and you're shooting yourself and you want a moving shot that follows you, then I could definitely see that this would be something you would want because you could stick your camera on a gimbal and you can move around in different scenes and it will follow you and it's going to lock on and stay with you. So definitely a cool addition to this gimbal and if this is the size and the kind of gimbal that you want, then great added benefit. So for me, this is a gimbal that I am going to keep around. This is the gimbal that I'm gonna use when I go travel. So if I don't need a lot of extra gear and I want something small and easy to take with me, then I'm gonna go with the Ronin SC because it is small, it packs down, 
and it gets stable shots. Now this is my low pro bag that I use when I'm traveling, just doing like quick day trips and I wanna be able to carry a bunch of gear with me. So with the DJI Ronin SC, what I found is that it's actually pretty easy to just pop this in. If I just see it put away for a little bit, I'll throw my lens cap on here, but it's gonna stay secure. If I'm worried about my camera, I'll pop the camera off. But you can even see on this smaller bag that it's easy just to slip in the side and it's easy just to pop out depending on what you're shooting. Now, the other awesome thing is that it breaks down so the handle comes off. One thing I wish that they did is they made this handle detachable at the motor, not necessarily down this part because you still have this nub. And I talked about this with the Fiutech 4500. They split it here at the motor and this control unit is something you can take off. For me, this control unit is kind of the issue because the motors are great, that can slip into your bag. This battery is nice, you can slip that into your bag, but I wish it was cut off more at the motors or there was a second bit that you can pop off. So with the Fiutech 4500, your control unit completely pops off. So that's kind of a difference and it does make a difference when you're packing into a bag and you're trying to save space and you don't want it to get caught on stuff. So overall, the DJI Ronin SC is a pretty awesome gimbal. I do like this gimbal a lot. It's one I'm gonna keep around. It's one that I'm gonna use when I need a smaller setup. I'm traveling, if I'm like on the go traveling or like climbing or something like that, this gimbal makes it super easy to pack down, having the locks, having it accessible pretty easily. So guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments about the DJI Ronin SC. Did you get one? Are you thinking of getting one? Or what are some of the other gimbals that you're considering if you're not gonna get the DJI Ronin SC? All right, guys, that is it. I'll see you on the next one.